for Zern uh, module 5 lesson 11 because I noticed some of you were struggling and had some tower alerts so if you want me to make other videos for other lessons um, let me know I'll be happy to do that as well so we're gonna go ahead and get started our first question says a rectangle measures two and one third inches by one and two third inches what is this area so they want us to find the area model that correctly represents the rectangle. So we're going to find our area model that has two and one third and also one and two thirds. And so this first one has two and a third, has one and two thirds. So that one looks to be correct, but I am going to go ahead and double check the other options as well. So the second one has one and two thirds, but it does not have two and one third. It only has two. And the bottom one has uh, two and one third and then one and two thirds, but they are not correctly lined up. They split the fractions apart from their uh, whole numbers. So we're going to go back to the first one because that obviously has our correct choices. Now they want you to find the area of the largest part. So all you're going to do here is multiply the two numbers that intersect. So we can see that the two, if it were traveling down the box, it would intersect here and the one would intersect here. So this is pretty much one times two. Just imagine there's a little X right here in the corner that tells you to multiply. So I'm going to put my two and that's correct. Now we have one times one third. That's going to give us one third. Anything times one is always itself. That's our identity property of multiplication. Now we have two times two thirds. So just imagine that this is a two over one. So two times two is four. And then three times one is three. And then our final fraction, we have two thirds times one third. So two times one is two. Three times three is nine. Remember when we're multiplying fractions, you multiply numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator. So what is the unit for the area of the rectangle? And remember, when we're working with area, you're using square units. So um, if we were working with cube, or th that would be volume. So that would have our cube or our three. Uh, just regular units would be if we were just telling measurements. But we're talking of area. So this is going to be units squared because we're talking about square area. So now they want you to solve for the actual area of the um, rectangle. So we're going to add those, all of our partial products, which is what we have in our area model. These are partial products. So now I'm going to combine all of my partial products together. Okay, so now to find our area, again, we're going to combine all of our partial products. I'm going to start with my fractions. So I'm going to go ahead and add my like units. So four thirds and one third, that gives me five thirds. Now to add five thirds and two ninths, I have to find a common denominator. I know that three and nine both have a common denominator of nine. So I'm going to change my five thirds to ninths. And I'm going to multiply both the five and the nine times three. So five times three is 15. And then three times three is nine. So 15 ninths plus two ninths is 17 ninths. Now, I need to change that 17 ninths as an improper fraction or a fraction greater than one. I have to change it to a mixed number. So 17 ninths, pretty much remember fractions tell you to divide. So 17 divided by nine. And nine is gonna go into 17 one time, and then we're gonna have eight left over. So we're gonna have one and eight ninths plus two. So that's going to give us three and eight ninths. So 
So remember, start with your fractions first because you're probably going to have a mixed number that you're going to have to add to your whole number. So like what we had with the one and eight ninths, we had to add that to the two. So start with your fractions first. And again, start with your like terms. So your uh, one third and your four third, you can add those first and then find the common denominator to add to your other fraction. So we're going to decompose the length two and one half into whole units and fractional units. So my whole number is going to be two. My fractional part is one half. So now they want us to find the area of each part, which just means again, imagine there's a little X right here that's telling us to multiply. So three fourths times two, just put your whole number over one. So three times two is six, four times one is four, three times one is three, four times two is eight. So what is the unit for the area of this rectangle? Remember, area is squared. We're talking about, uh, you're actually just imagine it's broken up into little square units. So now they want us to add the partial products to find the area of the entire rectangle. So it says to solve on paper and check your work on here. I would definitely have some scratch paper or an expo board uh, marker, something that you can write this out. So we're going to add six fourths plus three eighths. Again, we have to find a common denominator. You cannot add fractions with unlike denominators. I know that four and eight have a common denominator of eight. So I'm going to change my six fourths to eight by multiplying both the six and the four times two. So six times two is 12, four times two is eight. So I have 12 eighths plus three eighths, that's 15 eighths. That's going to give me one and seven eighths. So what is the area of Josie's rectangle? So we had one and seven eighths. Oh, actually, so now Josie's rectangle measures two and a half units by two and a half units. What is its area? So we're going to multiply two and one half times two and one half. Um, and so uh, you can actually change both of those into an improper fraction and just multiply straight across if that's easier. So we could change two and one half to five halves times five halves, and that would give us 10, I'm sorry, 25 fourths. And so four goes into 25 six times, and there's one fourth left over. Again, I would have paper, pencil, and actually write this out. And so you can use the area model and break apart your whole number and your fractional units. Or you can turn your fraction into, or I'm sorry, your mixed number into a improper fraction and just multiply straight across. But then you have to change it back into a mixed number as well. So hopefully that helped you guys with that lesson. If you're still struggling, uh, reach out to me and I'll be happy to have a Zoom meeting and walk you through it one-on-one. -on -one. But otherwise, let me know if there's other questions or other lessons you want me to record.